Wow. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to show you first my three new skins that I obtained through Lucky Draw and the Lucky Pendant Shop. I've been keeping an eye out for the Lucky Pendant Shop to change back to the Violet for a long time. And here's also the Genar. Just look at that. Wow. I couldn't decide which one to get, the Genar or the Violet. And if in case you're wondering, do I really like the color red? The answer is no. Trivia time. And he actually likes the color blue. But these red skins look epic. I sped up all 40 magic stones worth of magical draws. And here is the Aizenka skin. Wonderful. Making me actually want to play Aizenka now. And here's Florentino, except I didn't really... I'm not really fond of that skin, so I kind of just skipped it. I was hoping for a Lucky Pendant to get the Genar skin too, but not today. Alright, so today I've got a Kira gameplay that I'm excited to share about for two reasons. One, because I pulled up some incredible outplays, and number two, I was just so surprised that Kira is no longer invisible inside walls. I was definitely not aware of this during the gameplay and I thought it was a bug until I watched a Chinese video describing how Kira was buffed and stuff and like that. And so here's an English version telling you that Kira is no longer invisible inside walls. Not a bug. And before actually getting into the juicy part of the gameplay, I'm going to try something even more new this time. I'm going to try and actually commentate over the entire video in one take, or as little take as possible. And the reason is because there's been a lot of interest, uh, all right, cut. See, it's those big ums and ahs that I need to be practicing to avoid in order to do some live streaming, live commentating for my audiences. The thing is, any glory happened on October 18th, that was last week. And that's why I skipped that one week of my regular Sunday uploads, by the way. We had a good success and a lot of players are calling for more. We are now looking at developing some weekly or bi-weekly league games. Maybe separating out them into different divisions. Wait, cut, 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 cut. Why do I have to do that? I keep going on with like secondary thoughts and that is not good. Finish one thought first before doing your second thought, right? All right, cool. Action, let's try to finish that thought. So in short, we are trying to practice now this style of commentating in order to complement our live streams that hopefully we will be doing on a weekly basis. Alright, so last little buff and I am going to hit level 4. I look up at the map, thing is actually going back to the base so I don't think that ganking top is going to be a good idea. Heading towards the mid there is a deliciously half health arrow. I couldn't get there in time though even if I opened up my ultimate he would be already under the tower. So I decided to come here and camp the bottom tower to see if arrow is going to come back. I open my mouth ultimate here to try and hunt for him but oh no there's a Deltan over here. I take out using the first uh, uh, using my normal attack her shield and then try to engage on her but I missed my first mark and so I had to pull out. Considered about taking out the small camp but here is the Cuban's shadow and you can see that coming up right there. Alright and if you have for the avid viewers if you have noticed the blue buff just showed up on the mini map and that was because we were close enough to get the vision of the blue buff now we fully know Kulin has started the blue buff first and now we'll probably go back up top to gank after he finishes blue side here's a fight in the bottom earl uses his ultimate this is a good time for me to engage i use the First skill and get the mark onto the Kulin. Second skill to dodge some damage, but it is not enough. I did not time that one very well, and I will fall to the Kulin who came back from uh, his blue buff. Whew, let me just say, live commentary is hard. <sighs> I feel like I'm always like behind or something. I don't know. And I, I, I guess I have to be very used to the vocabulary. Couldn't find the word normal attack just now. Or auto. I could have said auto. Okay. Anyway. Let's get back into the zone. I'm actually about half a jungle clear away from Kulin. He cleared his blue buff in the previous fight. Before the previous fight, that is. And I didn't. So, I'm going to be late again. Probably going to the top to gank. This is going to be uh, not ideal. As you can see now, Kulin shows up on the map. Jinar is ready to gank. Thorn is and uh sorry Laville and Thane is are ready to gank, but the Kira is not. Here's the Kulin coming in with the Grack. And I am here 
Crack is ulting right now. I jump into the back line trying to get on the, onto somebody. I hit the Crack, so I decided to take him. Lavio is out in the back dealing a lot of damage with his auto attacks. And the ultimate on the Kira refreshes my first and second ability. I am able to engage once again onto the Talonis. Here's an arrow that comes in just to throw his life away at us. We spotted him out and tried to catch him with a first mark, but he already uses his first mark to dash away. It's a good time now to contest for this. Uh, Abyssal Dragon. I don't think there's anybody on the team of the red side who is going to be able to actually try to contest this from us. Oh man, listening back to my commentary just now, I think I've got a long way to go, especially with all my stutters and repeat of words. That's what I really like to do, repeating words. Like I use contest twice just now. Maybe I should like learn how to read a thesaurus maybe. If you guys were watching the minimap, Jinar gets hooked by the crack and Thane was, was just crying out, don't engage without him. That's going to be a tough fight up here. Jinar's lifeline is just dropping and dropping. We meet the Kulin in the bottom, but it is just pokes, it is just for knots. Kulin now shows himself in the middle of the map. And right now, we have a chance to camp out this Dialtan over here if we decide to. Opening up the ultimate, trying to chase out the Dialtan. Am I going to do it? I don't remember, actually. Trying to hunt out for the Dialtan right now. Found the Dialtan, able to get uh, the first skill onto him, but not enough. Here's the arrow flying in. I did not know he was coming here. There's the split coming down, but that was just luckily not enough damage. Kira as a jungler is one that requires a lot of farm in my opinion at least in the early game you're not that strong you got to build up your damage in order to um really be useful however one saving grace about kira is you can do these kind of pokes and lose on the trades because you have your built-in 25 percent magic lifesteal as long as you use your ability oh but one second here we go let's talk about this fight instead jumping in trying to disrupt the crack out but little did i know well i mean i think i did remember this but um okay but yeah <laughs> wait a second I, i'm putting too much interjections in there okay let's just watch this kill and fall first with the um with the labio all right <laughs> going back to finish my thought over there crack ultimate cannot be disrupted by using the Kiro first skill. It does not stun, it only moves Grack, so apparently that doesn't count. Here we catch out a Diaotan Mark here with the first skill, but not enough damage coming out to be able to take her away from us. Diaotan, however, very, very um, naughty coming back out around. If Junar and I had the ability set on killing her, we wouldn't have been uh, we would probably be able to do that. From a macro perspective right now, Laville is on death counter and Errol is forced to be clearing out the bottom wave. Right now we don't have any vision onto the enemy jungle. It is very difficult to tell what to do over here. It, appear it appears that the sentinel was just taken out. So it seems like also now the entire blue side is trying to move up. So in this case, if three people is going to show up, this Delta is going to have to be very careful. And I remember this play very well. This is one of the outplays or one of the things that I really liked. So a first ability first to get out of the shield, marking, dodging, and then using every of that combo, full thing to just destroy the Delta. No counters. Excellent enough. Free rep buff to hand with the entire red side of the jungle invaded by blue. Poor people. Here's an opportunity for them to take down now the high ground. Oh, uh, sorry, the. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so hard. Okay, let's reset. Alright, fresh recording. Thane and Laville right now pushed in the high ground, the high, the top lane, and being able to start out this Slayer. Kira joins, being able to take down the Abyssal Dragon. That is the first Abyssal Dragon, I think, for this game. I can't see the stats, but right now I would be able to talk about that. Alright. Right now, the bottom lane going a little bit crazy. Here is the Q lane ulting. Crack it with an ultimate. Oh no, Kira is get also caught in trying to do something, but he's, she's also caught in now. Diaotan looking very low. Kira couldn't land her first ability. And now here's the Q lane. Q lane jumps into his alt form. Kira is now in danger, being targeted. But 
an incredible first ability mark to mark the Q Lin and Kira's a second ability, just that immune frame being able to stop the Q Lin from following up with any attacks and turns that situation right around. Again, here is Kira's life steal coming right into play here. Not even deciding to go back, she is going to just farm out her jungle again. Back at your half, half health. And here it is. There is that first ability. The next three normal attacks are your magic life steals, or they're actually dealing magic damage. So your 25% magic life steal is going to work. Little camp over there just turned into the freezing color, so the Deltan is probably around. Okay, here is the Deltan right in the middle. Is there? There's an opportunity now to just jump in. Oh! Gosh, that was a little bit of a slow reaction over there. So now Iron Body Kira just standing there, getting shot by the Talanis. And here is the moment when I thought, for sure there was a bug. Come on, I'm invisible inside walls, right? But alright guys, don't do the same mistake as me. I'm telling you now and in English that Kira is no longer invisible when she's inside walls. Alright, so let's talk about that plays a little bit. Um, I think that was just a mistake from the blue side. Um, Arthur did a good job surviving against the arrow, and Kira, <laughs> unfortunately, was looking the other way, looking at the low health crack, and looking at whether or not there could be a play there. So, that was just out. Um, just a mistake on the blue side overall. For this mistake, blue team loses out the mid lane outer tower. And there's a mechanic coming in from this patch is the little vision inside your own jungle when your uh, mid-tier towers fall. Okay, let's just watch this back over here. Arrow misses the jump over the wall and this is an easy pickup for the four people or maybe five people all gathered out in the bottom. Alright, so back onto that mechanic. What we were saying is that if you can see on the minimap right now, the little blue dot, I mean, sorry, the little green dot, if you step on that after your mid tower falls, you can gain vision inside your jungle. It appears that there might be a limit to how many times you can use it because late game, I can't seem to step on it very often, but I might be wrong about that. Oh, here is an excellent freeze by the Deltan, trying to stop that Tell Honest, but Tira is going to have to trade her life for it. There's the ultimate coming down to try and end that Deltan, but Kulin is still in the back doing some work right now. He's in the alt form again. That's just going to be no escape as Arrow jumps up to get the Jinar if he somehow escapes Kulin's massive crits. Kulin's ability is very interesting too for the viewers who do not know about him yet. He has an excellent dodge on the hook, by the way. Kulin, if he is hitting the back of an enemy, he will have 100% critical chance. But if he is hitting from the front of the enemy, then he will have 0% crit chance. There is a cap of 1,500 critical damage onto uh, minions, but uh, for enemy heroes, there is no such limit. Alright, very simple. Leash and a kill on the blue buff. The red buff now probably going over to Laville. He'll be able to use that a lot better. Kraken arrow appearing to be a little bit overextended, but no, it is a trap. And Thane pushes in, committing to the fight, but quickly destroyed by the 7.1k Deltan. Deltan next focus for Kira, but little does she know all oh, her teammates has already fallen over there. If we had a replay, Arthur was engaged by the arrow. Pokita very low, could not protect the backline. Thane already taken care of by the front line, frozen probably by the Deltan and ulted into, controlled probably by Crack as well, cannot get out of that. And then Kulin just sweeps in, working on the poor Laville and the Jinar. Nothing they can do against a very well fed Kulin. Two members from the red side is going to push for the win over here, but Thane is already alive, and here's a double trouble slamming down onto the Talan is a Jinar with the ultimate securing the core. If the double trouble hadn't connected onto the Talanis, I think that would have been GG right there. Kira using the first ability lens and opens up the vision. Kulin is completely seen. I don't think he actually knew as he rushes right into the middle of five enemies. In a blink of an eye, it is now a 5v3 for blue.
Unfortunately, they're going to split up. Some people want to take the Slayer for this opportunity, and some other players who might think that they can just push to win the three towers are actually going to try and take down the middle lane. And, and that, my friends, is the limit of solo queues. Without the Kira ultimate, I think I was just a little bit afraid about diving that tower. In fact, I was thinking, let's manage the wave a little bit before rushing the core. And here, Grack lines a hook onto the Arthur. Arthur taken down really quickly by the Talonas in the back. Dane pushes in, trying to get some distance. Here is Grack hooks again, and landing this time onto the look. That is going to be the nail in the coffin as Akira jumps in, trying to turn the fight around. Little does she know, we are already disadvantaged. Only two players falling on the red side. That's going to be... Almost a team wipe if Genar can survive. But oh no, here's the Kulin coming in from the side, probably from our blue side. Kulin was not even in that fight. Genar surviving with less than half HP. With 12 seconds on the nearest revive, Tal Anis pushing in. No waves yet. Genar could alt and trying to save the day. Kulin is also in here, but the core is already so low. And oh no, Genar's ultimate or his commitment really came too slow. He should have locked the wave outside of the core tower range in order for it to maybe maintain a little bit more of that backdoor protection and wait for the Arthur to revive and turn the situation around. Alright, let's take a look at the post game stats. Rank 3 for Kira. A star loss protection card. Very nice. I was able to use this star loss and a couple of ring, uh, wins to propel myself to veteran today. That felt pretty good. I would give my winning MVP to the Deltan, who was so proficient at her ultimates, creating a zone of impenetrable region for Kira to do anything before that ultimate could finish. That's it for today. I actually finished in one hour. That felt pretty awesome. Alright, see you guys on Thursday for the live stream. And... I don't know. And what? I don't know. Alright. Signing out. Bye.